One can talk and talk about density operators. It's, it's a vast field, but given that this is a, an introductory course to quantum information science, uh, I'm not going to explore, explore all nitty-gritty details of, uh, of the field. Um, you will see density operators, of course, again and again and again, and uh, we will look at the evolution of density operators uh, later on when we talk about um, open quantum system and uh, more general dynamics than the unitary dynamics. But um, before I conclude this part, perhaps uh, I should say a few words about uh, distances between density operators. Um, density operators form a convex set, but uh, so that's why I'm just drawing my potato more carefully this time. Um, all this means that if you just pick up two points and they represent density operators, row 1, row 2, then any convex combination of row 1 and row 2 is also a legal density operator, but that's not what I'm <laughs> going to talk about. So I want to talk about the distance between the two density operators. And uh, the, the most common distance, and probably the most useful distance that we have um, uh, is uh, the trace distance. So it's based on the trace norm of, um, of an operator. So given an operator A, you know, we are in finite dimensional spaces, so it's, uh, it's, it's not uh, a very subtle mathematics, it's a, ra a rather straightforward thing. So the trace distance, um, sorry, the trace norm of this operator A is defined as trace of the square root of A dagger A. What it really means is that uh, you take the sum of singular value of this operator or you just look at the eigenvalues, take the mod of each eigenvalue, add them together. So that's, uh, that's your trace norm. And of course, given a norm, you can always define the distance. And for the two density operator like 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 this row one and row two you just simply take the difference between those two density operators and take the trace norm so that's that's a valid distance that's a valid metric on the set of density operators when we deal with qubits that distance has a very nice interpretation jump you know you can visualize it nicely remember that uh, when we when we consider, when we when we talk about qubit, we almost always, if you want to visualize anything associated with a qubit, just draw a block sphere. Um, so that's your that should be your first approach. That gives you some kind of intuition how things work. And uh, so, given a block sphere, you know that if I have um, density operators uh, row one, which you can always parameterize them in terms of the block vector, right? So it's identity plus s one. Um, row and row 2 is going to be 1 over 2 identity plus s2 so those are the the two block vectors associated with uh, density operators row 1 and row 2 so you may just have one of them somewhere here and the other one somewhere here so they in general you know that as you remember they are inside the, the block sphere so we should be talking about the block ball, but you know, everyone is talking about the block sphere. But it's not only the surface that we are interested in, especially when we are talking about, about the uh, mixed states. The, the pure states given by, the, given by projectors on, on, on uh, state vectors are on the surface of this block sphere. But the mixed states are vectors which lie inside, the points inside the block sphere. So given those two, the, um, the difference between them is um, exactly the trace distance between the two density operators. So, so, the, so this thing here, the length of S1 minus S2 is equal to the trace distance row 1 minus row 2. That's for qubits, but that's, that gives you a pretty good intuition when you, when you play with uh, some properties of the trace distance. So it's useful to have this mental picture. Um, for example, you can see right away that um, 
when you apply unitary operation, so the trace distance will be invariant under the unitary transformation because what unitary operation does, it rotates the whole block sphere, right? So those two vectors, S1 and S2, will just rotate somehow. It's not going to affect the, the difference between the two. So you can see that right away that that's, that's sort of um, intuition behind the fact that the trace distance is uh, invariant under the unitary operations. Um, the reason why trace distance is picked up is um, because it's, it connects very nicely with another distance that is used in statistics. It's called the, the statistical distance. And uh, that one is quite often used when we try to distinguish between different probability distributions. But uh, the generalization of this to, um, to the quantum case is associated with the fact that we find it useful when we try to distinguish between quantum states described by two density operators. So in fact, if I give you a be the qubit or any quantum system, and I tell you that it's prepared either in state row 1 or state row 2, and it's equally likely, and I'll just ask you to construct a good measurement to distinguish between the two. So the best you can do, you, you cannot yeah. depending, of course, what the row, are and r row 1 and row 2 are. But in general, you cannot distinguish those states perfectly. And uh, the trace distance tells us, essentially, that the best you can do, so your probability of success is uh, half 1 plus row 1 minus row 2 trace distance over 2. Um, so I'm not going to derive it for you, but uh, that, uh, that is a wonderful exercise for you to, to, to show this. So that, that the optimal way of um, trying to distinguish between two preparations uh, described by the density operator row 1 or row 2 that are equally likely that are given to you, and I just ask you, well, you know, which one was it? Is it row 1 or row 2? So then you can construct a measurement. And the best you can do is to, um, your probability of success, sometimes you, you, you'll get it right, sometimes you fail. But your probability of success, if we just play this game many times, will be given by this formula here. And so, so here is your trace distance, um, something that is worth knowing, certainly, when we talk about uh, sending signals using density operators.